All right, Gary, so that's good yeah. to see you here at the mining in Darba. How did you, you get into the mining game? Jeez, we started uh, started originally as just a plant hire company and then progressed into construction and then uh, we've, we've been involved in a couple of uh, contract mining uh, contracts. Absolutely. So, just by chance, basically. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the lady just all said, uh, mate, you asked for a loan in 95 and that's uh, for, for a dump truck and that's how, you, how, how the wheel started spinning. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't involved in the '95 World, World Cup, so I had, <laughs> I had a bit of time on my hands. And uh, yeah, it's a guy that I studied with, and uh, he was at a loose end, and we just started off by sort of buying one little TLB and and reinvested and developed the company from there. And the key is to growing growing the business organically, and uh, 20 years in the game is a long time. Yeah, I think it's uh, basically been uh, around the people that we do have. Uh, we've had fantastic people, and I know everyone says that, but I, I always relate it back to rugby. You know, if you've got one weak link in your back line or in your forwards, it's going to affect the way you perform. And you know, we've been very lucky. Uh, my partner was very dynamic, and uh, he was also quite. Um, he, he quite enjoys uh, taking a bit of risk. So yeah, we've been very fortunate from that time. And what sort of lessons did you take from, from your captains here and, and uh, impart it into your, your role as uh, owner? Well, I think, um, I suppose the biggest uh, thing, um, you know, it took me some time to understand the business and I'm still learning all the time. But from a rugby perspective, I think you do learn uh, discipline. I think uh, you need to put in the, the training hours and you need to, to put all that effort off the field. Uh, and on the field to, to be successful and then you know I, I was fortunate to have a, a proper team around me both at the Sharks and at the Springboks level and so we try to quite, try to create the same environment. I'm sure you're referring to guys like Mac, Mac Ian, Ian McIntosh. Yeah Mac was he was sort of instrumental you know he he just showed me the passion that you need to to be successful. Um, so it, it's the same in business. You've got to have that that passion. I had uh, great players like Andre Jubert, Henry Honeyball, John Allen, Mark Andrews, and all those guys. And I'm currently in business with Adrian Garvey. So you know, it's 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 trying to create that little little environment that we learned uh, through Mac and through rugby. Yeah, here Garvey's uh, partnering up with you in the last two years. Yeah, last uh, three years ago we started. Uh, we ended up with a, a drilling contract, uh, exploration drilling, and at the same time he came to me and he had so we got tired of coaching kids and wanted to find something new. So I said, well, you know, Adrian, go and go spend some time in Zambia and learn the business, and uh, and he's made it work. He's been phenomenal, phenomenal, you know. Uh, from knowing nothing, he, he puts a lot of hard work, and, and uh, you know he, he's also starting to put good people around him. And you don't have to be an expert in the in the business to make it successful, as long as you have that that sort of backup. And uh, what's the biggest lesson you've learned in the last 20 years, and, and the key opportunities you see in Africa as you expand your business? Yeah, I think uh, um, you know we took a view probably 10 years ago to go into Africa. Um, we've always had a philosophy that we're going to run good quality equipment um, so we were never going to compete in and around town we needed to be out in the rural areas so the next step was moving into Africa and it was a good timing because a lot of the construction guys came back you know the 2010 World Cup everyone was working here so it gave us that opportunity and we've sort of created a nice footprint around Africa and uh, you know the lessons learned is, is to if I could identify good people just in one interview, then you've got a skill that uh, that a lot of people don't have, and uh, there's something that I've really learned that you've got to really put the effort into trying to attract those good people and and do the homework about employing good people. Absolutely, and uh, and finally, Springbok Rugby, you happy with where it's at at the moment? Yeah, just chatting early on. I think uh, you know there's so much rugby in between now and the World Cup. Uh, you, you worry about injuries, so I think to say that we've got all the players at our disposal now is a bit early. I think if we do have a good run of uh, with no injuries, then I think we've got the players, and you know Heineke just needs to pick the right combinations. And I think he's got to stick to the way he wants to play. 
and then I think we've got as good a chance as any. You're one of the smartest players in the game. Do you think sometimes we overlook smartness for, 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 for just sheer size? You know, it's, uh, I've been out of the game for so long. Um, the game has changed uh, dramatically. Uh, and, you know, I went to the UCT Marty's game on Monday, and those boys were, were massive, and they're putting in big hits. So I think rugby as a whole has, has to look at the rules because it's become very much a, a, a power game, um, and, and you know, the, a lot of the selection is done on stats. You know, you're weighing this doing this sort of push-ups and this sort of bench press and I think they need to look at the rules and how they can get it back to that you know it's not often that you have a turnaround and uh, opportunity that guys aren't expecting um, so to allow the game to still have a little scrum half and uh, you know a very fast wing instead of just being too powerful but I think the rules have to accommodate that.